So let's get real. That's our theme for February. Let's get real. And we're going to get real about life, about relationships, about what personal transformation really means to us and what it takes. So this month, we're expecting to get real in these important areas of our lives by bringing a large dose of reality, capital R, that means it's God, uh, to the table. We're bringing God to the table. Yes, why not? God is everywhere anyway, omnipresent. Last week we got real about life's lessons. And if you didn't hear the message, let me just say that you might want to hear it because it could give you an entirely different perspective on the idea of what life's lessons really are. It's up on YouTube, under my name. So it's, up, it's, it's on YouTube, you can watch all of these talks. Today, is since it's the season of greeting cards and candy and flowers and lingerie, if you wear that stuff. <laughs> Please, I'm 74, I had enough. Uh, anyway, that's not, that's not it. It's about love, but every day is really about love. But this is the season we, we celebrate that whole Valentine's thing. And it feels appropriate, though, to get real, to get real about relationships. What are relationships? And for those of you who don't know um, or don't like, actually, this time of year, because you aren't in a relationship, you needn't need to fear because today we are going to describe that term relationships in a much bigger and better way than ever before. Because wherever you are, wherever you turn, in this human experience, you will always be in relationships. It's, it's inescapable. If you're with yourself, you will be in relationship. If you're walking down the street, you are in relationship. You're in relationship with your family, with your colleagues and coworkers, with your friends, with the grocery store, uh, with the grocery store clerk. And even I was in relationship with the popcorn guy at the movie theater. Why not? Make their day. Smile. Thank. Thank people. It is, it, it, it absolutely is a game changer for so many. We're in relationship, I don't know about this, but with the drivers on the road, we have to be in relationship. With the drivers on the road, right? Still working on that. I've been working on that for about 40 years. But. You're in relationship if you have a partner. You're in relationship with the God of your being. To me, that is the most important relationship you could ever be in. And today we're gonna get, get real, get real with what works and what doesn't work to create and sustain a genuine and real relationship in all those areas of our lives. Because you got little papers in your book, and you, I mean, pens are available, so if you ever need a pen, we should always have a bunch on the table out there. Uh, you have paper, you have pen. Take notes, because there's some practices that we can do. So are you ready to get real? Yes. Yeah. A couple of people are. Are the rest of you? Don't yes. take any notes, just sit there. Because here we go. This is page three. This is from 365 Science of Mind. Ernest Holmes. He gave us this pretty powerful formula for doing this. He wrote, we can all live happily, harmoniously, and successfully with one another when each of us practices a conscious recognition of the presence of love within ourselves and within everyone. We can overcome the troubles and difficulties that we have allowed to enter our lives when we remember that love is that creating and sustaining presence within all. And those are beautiful and empowering words. And I love them 
But we need to do more than just remember those words. But the, that's a good starting point. Love is the creating and sustaining presence within all. That's where we start. Then we must do the work. And although we do start there, and we, we move further into developing the relationships through some practices that I'm gonna give us here this morning. But before I do, Miriam Williamson, in her book, A Return to Love, wrote this. Love takes more than crystals and rainbows. It takes discipline and practice. It is not just the sweet sentiment from a Hallmark card. It is a radical commitment to the, to the different way of being, a response to life that is completely at odds with the rest of the world. Not everyone's gonna feel or think the way you do, but that doesn't make a difference. Because you are you, and you get to call the shots in your life. And someone once said, love is not for lazy people. It, to exist in its fullness, remember, sometimes it demands a very precise and strong gestures. And that's what we're gonna talk about. I want to present this morning three different gestures of love. And they can, if practiced, move all the relationships to a higher, more holy level, and they will definitely be more real. So the first one is compassion. Of Jesus, Ernest Holmes writes in his Science of Mind, humble in his humanity, compassionate in his tenderness, he let the great spirit speak through him in words of love and sympathy. He proclaimed his divinity through his humanity and taught that all men are brothers. No one ever lived who valued the human soul more than Jesus, for he knew it to be the personification of God. And that's the personification of God within each and every one of us to express our God selves. We have every attribute because we are that, that consciousness of godliness. That's who we are in absolute truth. So what does it mean to get real about compassion in all and any of our relationships? So being compassionate means to listen without judgment without analyzing or without trying to fix something. Being compassionate means asking, how can I understand this better? Being compassionate means to look at every act of another human being as a call for love. Some of these are not easy, but if you work it, as they say, if you work it, it works. But you, you, it, that's why discipline is necessary. Being compassionate also means having an understanding and empathy for another person's feelings and experiences and offering whatever, whatever help we can. And I want to give you a really extreme example of compassion. And this was reported in a newspaper, it's in my old files, a long time ago. And the article was entitled, A Lesson Learned on a Bus in Kenya. It told of a bus containing Christians and Muslims just outside a Kenyan city, which near, which near Christmas several years, which was, oh wow. Well, it was near Christmas seven years ago, and the terrorists were forced to stop. More than 10 heavily guarded militants of the Somali-based Al-Shaba group ordered the passengers to get out and form two lines, two groups. The Muslims on one side, the Christians on the other side. And it became clear because of previous attacks what would happen if they did this? 
and members of this terrorist group had slaughtered the Christians and spared the Muslims. Despite knowing this pattern and being ordered to separate, the Muslim passengers refused to separate themselves from their non-Muslim fellow passengers. In fact, some even offered headscarves to the Christians. And one of the Muslim passengers said this, we stuck tightly together. The militants threatened to shoot us, but we still refused and protected our brothers and sisters. Finally, the militants gave up and left. The article ends with these lines. In the face of death, they saw each other first as human beings. That's a lesson worth remembering in the country that's supposed to be the beacon of liberty. It is so important, look at where we are today, to remember all of our fellow human beings as just that, our fellow human beings, not separate, but united, all one. Because within each and every one, I don't care what the religion, what the color of the skin, what the, the values or anything else someone has, within each and every one is that same God that is within you. There is no separation. That's an absolute. That's an absolute, we believe. It, so to me, that was compassion personified, really and truly. And in the Holmes Reader, on page 61, he wrote this. Compassion and caring are the ties that bind us together in a mutual understanding and in the unified attempt to uncover the divinity in each other. Compassion is the most gentle of human virtues, for it is the outpouring of the divine givingness through all. A beautiful divine givingness is what we call the grace of God. It flows in and through and as all of us. You, thankfully, won't have to have <clears throat> the compassion that the Muslims had for the Christians in the bus. But you can still bring more compassion to our fellow travelers in our experiences every day, every day. So it's a question that is worth pondering. How can we bring more compassion into our lives. The next quality is kindness. The second gesture which will help us get real in our relationships is kindness. Mother Teresa once said, be the living expression of God's kindness. Kindness in your face, kindness in your smile, and kindness in your warm greeting. And the Dalai Lama so famously said, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. Simply being kind, respecting other humans. It makes us feel good and it changes. You don't know at what point you are meeting that person, what they're going through, what experiences they are having. And that smile, that kindness, whatever it is, can lift them right up out of it, change the lives. And all of that sounds well and good, but what does it look like truly in our lives? What does it look like? What if we did each and every day of this week, this is part of our practice for this week, consciously one random act of kindness to a stranger? or for a stranger is a better word. One random act of kindness. It could be a kind or a soft word, a helping hand, a smile, giving an anonymous gift to someone, picking up the trash on someone's lawn, helping someone load their groceries into their car, paying for the coffee, I, I love these ones, 
paying for the coffee <clears throat> for the person behind you in, in the local coffee shop or drive through it's even better. The list, of course, goes on and on, but you get the gist of it. We can do these little things, one a day, to strangers. My charge to you then is to enlarge and engage in one random act of kindness to a stranger each day of the week. And sometimes, in fact a lot of the times, you might find it also. It's easier to be kind to a stranger than those people that we love, <laughs> that we're around all the time, right? It's very easy to smile and be kind to a stranger, and then you, you know, you're with the people you live with or you're engaged with a lot, and it, it, it can sometimes be not so easy. Lucy, one of my favorite, favorite little cartoon people, said to Charlie Brown once, I love mankind, it's people I can't stand. <laughs> I love Lucy, she's really wise. Anyway, it's the people closest to us that we might, that we might say that about. So for this week, how about a random act of kindness also every day to someone we love or someone that we are in relationship with, however it is, a friend, a co-worker, a, a, a loved one, someone, children even. Why not? Children are the best when they go home with their parents, but they are the best. <laughs> I was out with the twins last night. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love them. Yes, they're wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So that right there is two random acts of kindness, one to strangers and then one to someone that we really, really are in relationship with. That's, that's for us to do this week, if you choose to. And then the final, the final genuine action that will promote beauty in any relationship may not seem like it at first blush, but it is so important to be authentic. To be authentic. Being real about who you are to yourself, first of all. Being willing to show others your strengths as well as your weaknesses. Be willing to be vulnerable. Be willing to be bold with your vision and dreams. And be willing to be clear and honest, direct in a relationship. With, and while directly communicating to anyone you are in a relationship with that kindness and compassion, but you know, we hold things in, and sometimes it's so much better to have a conversation, to be authentic, and to clear the air. It really is a healthy thing to do. And be willing to say no, even when the other person is expecting a yes. That's, that can be, to some people, a big one. On this point, I have just one question. Is there a relationship where you are not being authentically you, and only you know that. And are you willing to clean that up this week? Part of the assignment. So those three attributes, compassion, kindness, and authenticity, all brought about into our different relationships can make a huge difference, a huge difference. And then we have our internal relationship. How are we to us, to ourselves? Compassionate, kind, authentic. So first, compassion in Help for Today by Ernest Holmes. He wrote, we can have no understanding of divine compassion unless we ourselves first exercise compassion for ourselves. Are we compassionate <coughs> with ourselves? I find sometimes we are the hardest critic 
to ourselves rather than anyone else. So having that compassion for self. Can we have compassion for ourselves when we, when we aren't kind and compassionate to others? Can we accept ourselves with love, even with our human frailties and flaws and mistakes? Can we look at those times when we are less than skillful in our relationship, less than skillful, that's a very nice way of saying it, less than skillful in our relationships. <laughs> anyway, and take that growth opportunity, because it always is an opportunity for growth, take that and move forward. So say this after me, please. I have compassion for myself. I have, I have compassion, compassion for, for myself. As well as for all others. As well as for all others. So that is. So, so it is. So it is. So then we move on to kindness for ourselves. Engage in a self-care and nurturing way of being with yourselves. And I know a lot of us do this, and a lot of us don't do this. But if we don't take care of ourselves first, it's difficult to take care of others. Treat your body temple, because that's what this is, in ways that promote its vitality and aliveness. Really honor our body. Schedule activities that promote self-care and love, and put it on your calendar. That's the most, for me, that's the most important part. Put it on the calendar, in my phone, if it's on the calendar, it's happening. If it's not in there, I won't remember it. So we don't remember sometimes to take care of ourselves. And that moves us into authenticity with ourselves. And what do I mean by that? It means to get real with ourselves about ourselves, who we really are, what we like, what we don't like. Realize who we really are, though. Who are we, really? Well, Holmes writes this in The Science of Mind, page 472. We must realize our divine nature and relationship to the truth of God. This relationship is one of complete unity. We are one with a power that is so magnificent. We are light in form. We are love in expression. We are creativity walking, and we are the life force talking. You are so special and so amazing, and each one is an emanation of God. No way around that. That's what the spiritual teaching is all about, that we are one with God, we can't be anything else. We are made out of God, we are God. We will leave these bodies. We are life forms that will, we, we're not separate from the infinite source of life. We are one with it. <clears throat> Do you have a strong and healthy relationship with the God of your being? That to me was the most important step forward in my life to have that very healthy relationship with the God of my being, to really feel it. I know there was a time many years ago I was trying to fill this hole in me with all these different relationships and friends and events and all kinds of busyness. And then a very wise friend of mine said, I needed to have a relationship with something more. And that something more is our higher power. It is our power. It is the God of our recognition and relationship. So get real with yourself about that relationship with God. That is really the strongest foundation you could ever have. And Holmes also wrote, we must come to Realize that at the base of everyone's life, there is a sincere desire to love and to be loved. Thus, the most valuable thing any one of us can do is to be a little more certain each day 
that we are meeting life with a greater sense of love. When we bring compassion for ourselves and others, kindness to ourselves and others, authenticity with ourselves and others, and then we will have gotten real about relationships. It's a give and take. It's a mutual understanding, sometimes not an agreement, but it's still honoring. We do namaste. It's still honoring the God in another person. We're meeting life with a greater sense of love. So I want to end this talk with this short reading. It's by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, a 19th century French monk and poet. And he wrote, the day will come after harnessing space and the winds, the tides and gravitation. We shall harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, for the second time in the history of mankind, we will have discovered fire. So let that fire in your heart be the love that you extend in small ways, in big ways. It doesn't make a difference. So I hope that you will all join me this week in these practices. And next week, we'll be talking about life's lessons and transformation and getting real about that. But for this week, we're going to set that nice tone for the whole week with that loving kindness. And so it is. And so it is.